are talking today relative to why does God use angels? And the first thing I would say about it that uh, it's impertinent to ask such a question, which also means it is pointless to ask it. Uh, God doesn't, uh, God doesn't ask our opinions about who he creates and how he creates. He, we're only part of that creation. And Jeremiah taught us that the, the potter was the one that did the thinking. <laughs> and the pot was the one that did the receiving. And so you and I are just receivers, uh, but we are not the creators of, uh, of, of the destiny of anyone. Uh, except ourselves, and so we are we're, we're dealing with something that's none of our business. How many like to deal with things like that that's just none of your business? Okay, well, <laughs> why, why God made angels is one of them. Uh, in your teaching syllabus here, um, in, in Psalm 103 and verse 30, uh, verse 20, it says, uh, there are four ministries of angels in Psalm 103, verse 20. Uh, there are four ministries there of these angels, and says uh, uh, they are urged to praise the Lord. So possibly their primary specific creative purposes was to praise to praise the Lord. Uh, when I was in uh, Brazil opening up a new church there in Brasilia and this week we received an invitation to come back and speak in the city and it would be a great joy to go back to the to the city again but I was looking out the window of my hotel room and uh, looking down at the government buildings that were kind of down slope below the hotel and uh, I said Lord what is my end and the Lord said that my inn had a relationship with exalting God. And, and maybe we forget to exalt him as we should and, uh, and, and, to, uh, and to praise him with the depth, the depth that we should. Uh, and so, uh, uh, so let us, with the angels, praise the Lord. And all the people said, and he says uh, that these, these creatures that were excellent in strength, and they should do his commandments. So first they praise, and secondly they obey. Now, that is not in the same order that you and I think. We think that obey is more necessary than anything else in the world. But here it says praise was number one. And then it says, obey uh, um, uh, his commandments, that that is number two. And that we are to be obedient to the voice of God. And uh, as, we, as he has an orderly universe and, and uh, all the creatures of the universe and all the great constellations that he puts in the skies are all obedient to him. So he says that we should walk in that way and be obedient to him. And so we, we are going to study uh, why did God create these beautiful persons that you and I call angels. Let's, let's read that uh, Psalm 103, verse 30. It says, Bless Jehovah, you angels, <laughs> That's a command. There's no option there. Uh, you just bless Jehovah, angels. And they knew who they were talking about, too, angels. It says, you are excellent in strength. Uh, he, he showed them their greatness. Uh, uh, excellent in strength. Uh, that do his commandments. And that you hearken unto the voice of his word. Isn't that beautiful? Whatever God says, they listen to it. I, I'm, I'm not sure that on the earth there's too much of that, the, the hearkening under what God says. I think God speaks many times to us, and we pay no attention at all. 
uh, we go right ahead and do something that's opposite of what God is directing uh, that, that we should do. If you turn the page, at least temporarily here, to page 37, um, we're, we're understanding that men will attain to this excellence of strength that angels have. Uh, and so uh, in the resurrection time, uh, which is just out in front of us, uh, there will be an equal or superior strength to what angels have and possibly equal or above in intelligence and in capability and, and in worship that we will excel the angels and their magnificent abilities that God has placed within them that we will do better than that that we will excel in it so this comes after the time of the rev of the revelation in first corinthians 15 and 42 it says so also in the resurrection of the dead uh, it, it is sown in corruption and it is raised in incorruption it is sown in dishonor but it's raised in honor uh, it is sown in weakness the human person is uh, into the ground but it's raised up in power and power uh, it, it, it is it is sown as a natural body, but it is raised up a spiritual body. Now, this gives you an insight into the resurrection of the dead that maybe you hadn't given a lot of contemplation to. Uh, there is that there is a there is a natural body, and there also is a spiritual body. That's through verse through verse forty forty four. So we have the Bible says that we shall be. Uh, similar to the angels in our in our res re resurrected being only we should be greater than them because the Bible says also we shall judge angels and, and if you judge angels uh, uh, that means you're superior to them or you wouldn't have the ability uh, to judge them and Matthew 22 and 30 it says for in the resurrection uh, the, the, you should neither marry nor are you given in marriage, but are you are as the angels of God in heaven. And, and, and so uh, uh, we will be certainly different. You see, why, why will there uh, be such a condition? Well, the population time will be over. Uh, Jesus said, uh, God said to Adam, uh, populate the earth. And he, he said it several times, populate the earth. We'll no longer be on this earth. Uh, we will be in, in a celestial atmosphere. And at that time, uh, we shall be as the angels. We won't be giving birth to, uh, to babies and all of this business. But we will, we will be like created beings. Uh, and and, and there are, I know some people say, well, I want my wife in heaven. Well, not having been there, you don't know what you're going to want. So why don't you leave it up to God? She may not even want you. So in any way, uh, it, it's a lot better to leave all things up to God because he does all things well. And uh, in, in the finality of all things, it's just perfect. And so we are not going to, to say, well, I wish it was another way. We, we will enjoy it the way God, God makes it. Can you say amen? Uh, in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35, and, and it came to pass that night that the angel of God uh, went out and, and he, he smote the camp of the Assyrians uh, 144,000 of them. And, and when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Uh, and so here we have an angel from heaven uh, destroying the enemies of, of God. Uh, not only were they worf worshipful and obedient to the Father, but here we find them, uh, when you say, why did God make angels? Uh, when Israel was overwhelmed, completely overwhelmed, uh, trembling and shaking and crying out to God, an angel in one night took care of the whole thing. And so they are the warriors of God, besides being the praisers of God. Now that might seem uh, just, just a little strange that a, 
<laughs> that a praiser and a warrior go together. But maybe it should not. Uh, why shouldn't they that war also praise? And all the people said? Now, you see, why does God use angels? Uh, according to the Bible, God created angels to do some things, such as adore him, worship him, praise him around his throne. He created them for praise. Now, uh, that's the most majestic thing that one could say, really, that they were created for praise. Uh, this, this takes us out of the realm of our human thinking. We're kind of egoistic in our, in our birth, you know. That we like good things said about ourselves, but in praising another, you're not saying good things about yourself. So evidently we will have a, a new nature over there on the other side of death and that we will be so fulfilled in our praising God. We will be totally fulfilled as the angels are in our, in our praising him. In the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, in chapter 5 and verse 11, it says, then, then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the, the living creatures and the elders, and, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. Ooh, which is a hundred million, and then thousands of thousands. A thousand thousand is a million, and and so thousands of thousands around around the throne of God. So, uh, they are they are innumerable. That's what he's trying to tell you, that in heaven, and yet they, I'm sure, having having tremendous identity, each one will have a separate name. And in heaven you will be in perfect knowledge. You'll ask nobody their name. When you meet Noah, you won't say, Good morning, sir, who are you? You'll say, Good morning, Noah, how you doing? Uh, we will know everybody in heaven. Heaven is not a place for strangers. There will not be any strangers in heaven. Uh, you say, How about the people from China? Well, you will know them when you see them. Uh, and, and, and you'll be able to, uh, to speak their name. And the same for Japan, and the same for all other the parts of, of the world. There'll be no ignorance in heaven, uh, and, and there won't be any dark spots in heaven. And they're all going to be light, and they're all going to be totally fulfilled, in that we shall know all things and enjoy all things. Now, in verse 12, it says, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. I, I'd like for us to, to, to look at that uh, just, just once again. This is the Revelation chapter 5, and this is verse 12. Well, when we, we speak of all these innumerable, beautiful creatures that are around the throne of God, uh, he says, they're singing a song with a loud voice, saying, Worthy is the Lamb. Uh, we will possibly never understand the fullness of Calvary and Golgotha until we get to heaven. And when we hear the angels sing about it, you know, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, the, the one that went to Calvary and gave his life. Uh, he will receive power, Throughout all eternity, he will receive power from the Father. He will receive riches. I, I don't quite understand that. They pave the, the streets with gold, and everybody has a mansion, and, I, and there are no banks in heaven. So uh, I don't know exactly what riches would mean unless they start putting diamonds all over him or something like that. And riches, and he shall receive wisdom. Isn't that amazing? We've missed wisdom so much during our lifetime. I think maybe for your children you should pray over them. For the wisdom of God to be in your child. That they'll understand more than other people. 
understand. At 12 years old, Jesus was asking questions to the lawyers uh, in Jerusalem, and he was answering their questions insomuch until everybody was amazed that a 12-year-old knew more than all the rest of the people in Jerusalem, even the doctors that had learnt, taught for so long and had studied for, uh, for, for so long. Wisdom, and the, that he had strength, and he was given honor, and he was given glory, and he was given blessing. These are the things that will be added uh, to our Lord and Savior uh, that we will see in, into heaven. Now, and your point B here, it's possible, and I ought to say this is just possible. Uh, it's just to protect the throne of God. Uh, th these angels are the militia of heaven, they, the fighting men, uh, to protect the throne. Satan may desire to come against that throne once again, like he did one time in the past and got expelled from heaven. But the angels prevent this. In the book of Isaiah, in chapter 6 and verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also Jehovah sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Now that's, that will be something to see. Um, uh, his beautiful robes that he will be wearing, uh, the way that he comes in, the way he does the work that he does there in heaven. His train filled the temple, and above it stood the, the, the seraphim, each had six wings, uh, with which he covered his face with two, and with, with two he covered his feet, and with two uh, he did fly. And some of these special, special assignments that the angels are, are asked to carry out, like in Judges chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, it records that the story of an angel who went, who, who sent, was sent to Gideon with a message from God. When, when Gideon asked for a sign, the angel touched Gideon's offering with his staff, and fire rose out of the rock, consuming the sacrifice. The angel's actions and message ministered faith and courage to Gideon so that, that he was able to overcome his fears, and he was able to go out and stand against Israel's enemies. He started off with 32,000, ended up with 300, and still wasn't afraid. He marched on forward and won great victories for God. Uh, why did God make angels? Not only for the throne of God, if that is necessary, uh, but also to fight the battles for man. You say, but that, that's all history. Uh, yeah, it, it may be. But there were a lot of things that happened in the war in the Near East that nobody could understand. And they still don't understand uh, how 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 large groups of the enemy suddenly found themselves all entwined and twisted up, and they had to surrender. So uh, don't think that God hasn't stopped using angels, because I believe he still uses angels. And all the people said, all right. The angels also use, number D, uh, as, as informers. They enlightened Abraham concerning the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, that's in Genesis chapter 18, verse 2. And he lifted up his eyes, and he looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And, and so one of them was the Lord, and two of them were the angels. Angels also uh, relay information about certain conditions on earth to God. Um, for example, in this same uh, uh, chapter here, verses 19 to 21, For I know him, God said, that he will command his children and his household after him. Uh, it, it could be that the greatest sin in America is that the fathers and the mothers have not commanded their household after them. I, I, I can remember uh, that when parents would say, oh, my children, they stay home on Thursday night, they have to study. And I, I remember stepping into a house not too long ago, 
and found the pastor's son watching the craziest movie you've ever seen in your life. They put me in there for a little rest period before they took me home. And, and, and I said, what are you watching that thing for? Oh, he says, I like this kind of thing. I said, you didn't hear my sermon tonight. No, he says, I was watching television. The parsonage was right next door to the church. Now, that's not commanding your children. Here is a teenage boy, looked like he was 16 years old. He didn't come to hear me preach. The sermon could have changed his whole life. But the father, he, he won't ever amount to anything on the face of this earth. He didn't know how to command his own family. Command his own family. Now, now the people overseas are sometimes a lot smarter than the people I hear in this country. My wife and I were in Puerto Rico preaching, and uh, I one, one night, I, I, a, a minister was there, and, and they, he just arrived that day in Puerto Rico, and so they asked him to testify, and he got up and told a sad story. He said that in India, his wife committed adultery with some Indian men. In those days, they had to travel by boat, and so they got on a boat to come home, and she took up with Indians on the boat. And he couldn't find his wife at night. She was running around the boat committing adultery with Indian men. And then they got to America, and she left him immediately. She didn't care for him anymore. These are Pentecostal people we're talking about. And, and he came down there and said, Now I've decided to come down and give you my life down here at Puerto Rico. He sat down, and the pastor pointed his finger at him and says, Would you get on the plane tomorrow morning and leave? So do you think you have any ability to bless another man's family when you don't know how to even control your own family? So we don't want you in these islands. We don't want you telling this story anymore. It's an abomination. So we pastors here teach, teach each other the first thing is to control their own homes. Have prayer meetings till everybody gets saved and full of the Holy Ghost in their home. And, and, and said, our first attention is our home. And you failed. I says, I'm sorry, sir. You cannot preach in any church. I sat there and listened. Americans don't have any guts. They just have intestines. They don't know what to do. They just let anybody preach at grins. Oh, my feel so sorry for you. Oh, my, my, my goodness. Yeah, you can preach everywhere. Those, those Puerto Ricans said, you're preaching nowhere. Get on a plane tomorrow and get back to America. I says, we don't want your kind down here at all. What did the angel say? For we know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of Jehovah to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. God could not keep his covenant if Abraham had not kept his covenant. And so... God made angels. This one was doing some in, informing work for God. And, and so they are assistants to God, and they fight the battles of our Lord. And we got a lot of scriptures there for you. And they wait upon God as servants to serve him anything that he wants to be done. Uh, they serve him. And then at the bottom of page uh, 39, angels are messengers, ministering spirits on man's behalf. Hebrews 1 and 7, and the angels, and of the angels, he said, who, 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 who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. It says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? So we have why did God make angels? He, he, he made them to minister to us. And, and, uh, and you say, but I haven't had any minister from them. Well, maybe you haven't needed any, too. Uh, the, the, there are in many instances people that have witnessed angels and been blessed by angels. And, and so uh, uh, let's, let's not count it out because our mundane lives of the natural uh, hasn't called for one. Uh, we're talking about a spiritual world here and, and a world of dedication to God. So let's thank God that he did make them. And uh, though we may not know too much about them on this earth, for eternity we should know all about them. 
for a whole of eternity. Uh, and they will serve us for eternity. We are the redeemed of the Lord in the highest order that will be in heaven, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And so even the angels cannot sing our song that we're saved by the blood of the Lamb because they have not been saved by the blood of the Lamb. But you and I have been saved by the blood of the Lamb. Can you say amen? Give the Lord a hand, everybody.